know what I'm saying? We always constantly try, we grow on kings, we always constantly try to see how we can press the line and see how we can basically build them up each day. You know, because a lot of times these kids, these kids are not really um, being taught anything when they go home. I'm not going to say everybody, but once they go home, you know, they're kind of, you know, chilling. But when they come to school, we kind of try to build them up each day. So I'm trying to figure out how can we stop letting them go down the wrong path. Because it's, this is all, as we all know, it's all in decision making, right? Life is about choices. You make the wrong choice, your life will be over, right? So that's what we're trying to figure out. So I, I want a solution, or if you, if any of y'all thought of a solution that can help us in helping these kids. No, sir. So we, uh, we've been associated throughout the city right now. I'm going to do a penny sale in the third grade. Third grade? Yeah. They, they want to pass a uh, seven out of six. Okay. Uh, I did it online, you know. Uh, I'm probably going to get the school bag and have a back on me. It's on Friday. So what's going to stop the crime? Hmm? What's going to stop the crime? I blame parents for a lot of this. Yeah, I mean, all that. We, yeah. we need yeah. more men. Yeah. Give them the cousin at home. Yeah, because when we were when we were growing up, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, ain't nothing y'all older than me. But <laughs> when back in the day, back in the old days, you know, it was it was a it was a trip a, 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 a trilogy. It was you know, home, school, and church. Uh-huh. I like. But see, nowadays, they got school in the streets. Most of them, you know. Yeah. This is just my opinion. Mm-hmm. Are you right? Are you wrong? Huh? I feel like people always say, you know, it starts at home. Yeah. And then they say, it takes a village. Right. Right? I feel like both of those are incorrect. And we talked about this point. I feel like both of those are not incorrect. <laughs> But they are arguable points because, first of all, if home don't know, if grandma didn't know, mm-hmm. and she couldn't teach the daughters, mm-hmm. then the daughter can't teach her child right. or her, right? Because if mom's still out there and she in the street smoking weed, doing whatever in the streets, mm-hmm. then she can't do what she's supposed to do to teach her child. So her child is part of the effect, right? Right. Now, so what if it don't start at home? What if it don't? What it, if it first what, gotta be at home? No, no, no. no. Yeah, what I'm saying is, it first gotta be at home. Be a mama and yeah, a dad. Listen, listen, listen. Well, okay, let's be real. Mm-hmm. I don't know what side of town you're from, or what side of town y'all from. Mm-hmm. I'm from Cottage Creek. This is what I saw growing up. Mm-hmm. They made it so easy with this Medicaid. They made it so easy with 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 child support. They made it so easy with uh with uh with the housing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. right? So when I was growing up, what I saw was the housing authority come around and go from door to door, making sure you didn't have a man in the house. That was part of that, what they were trying to do, right? Mm-hmm. Not just the housing, I'm talking about the government. Good. So then, you know the black man, you know what so, I mean? so then, wait, because see, now we got we to gotta understand it too now. If, yeah. if the black man ain't in the house, the white man ain't in the house, whatever well, man ain't in the house, right? Mm-hmm. All right? Yeah, so, home. Who gonna teach them how to be a man? Hey, That's number one. Number two, hey, our men, let's be real, step back. Yeah. Our men step back in big numbers. I ain't talking about just from the household, from the church, everything. They step back. And so they let the women run the thing, right? So now the women having to do two or three jobs, having to be the mama and the daddy, they having to be the again. pastor at the church, right? I, again, I say that. Jim Crow do. That's who? Jim Crow do. Well, we could we could blame that on Jim Crow. But what about in our community? So if if if, if you and your community, or you and your community, and we see a young man mm-hmm. that's staying right across the street from us, right? Mm-hmm. And we as men that been to the military, we done had jobs, we as men that had businesses, and we don't send that to that young man, who fault that is? The man that lived across the street from the the family? Exactly, because look, when you look, see this young man, see that young man right there? He grew up in who? Right? right. He decided to mentor a young man, 
Right? Yeah. So he decided to mentor young men. He came back here and mentored young men, right? Mm -hmm. But if that young man right there, seeing you going to work every day, mm -hmm. seeing you get up every day, right? Mm -hmm. And you going to work, but you never look his way. You never speak to him. Yeah. You never talk to him, right? You never call him over there and say, hey, how you, how you crazy doing, young man? What, right? What you into? What you into? Well, when he get to be 16, 17, if he in the wrong thing, guess who he's going to get first? Mm -hmm. You. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you, and you, and you. Because you're my neighbor. Guess what? I know everything about you. I know what time you come home. I know what time you leave. Mm -hmm. I know, I know you, what kind of car you drive. I know that you got a lot of money. Because oh, you go to work. Because you go to work. And you probably hustle on the side. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to hustle. Because a lot of these men out here, and some of them in the pulpit, some of them got business, never did go back to the community where they grew up and said, man, this is my fault. I'm the one who put all this out here. Let me show you how to get out of this situation. Yeah. So now we, the, the easiest way to say it is, Mr. George, mm -hmm. to start at home and get out of the way. Get huh? Hey, hey, but guess what? Guess what? We let them do as as men. We let them put this stuff on. We don't say nothing about it. Mm -hmm. We don't say. How is it that some of these radio stations can let let all this cussing be on the radio? Let all nobody said nothing. But soon as cussing come down, man, I don't like that. We we'll start with the radio station, start with the TV station. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But we'll put that that famous saying: it started at home, and then we get out of the way. No, that's our way of saying it ain't my problem. But that's what I said back in the day. We had a children. But you know back, in day, back in the day, back in the day, y'all had alcohol, wild out roll, yeah. Thunderbird, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. guess what? That's 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 where a lot of the men left themselves yeah. in that bar. Yeah. My dad included. Yeah. My dad, was my dad went to Vietnam. A lot of men came back. Yeah. They, you know what I'm saying? They went straight. Someone got on that, got on that hair on everything. PTSD, but yeah, PTSD, right? But they don't, they don't, they don't, you know, they they can't. Some of them can't sit with someone just. But what about the one that, that that came back kind of straight? They ain't going back to try to, you know. A lot of they, so I'm push on that. That's one of my uh my hot topics, my hot button soapbox issues. Mm -hmm. How do we really deal with crime and how do we um make a difference? You talked about that trilogy as far as the home, the school, and the church. Mm -hmm. I'm the first one to say that I think the church dropped the ball. As a pastor, I think the churches dropped the ball. Church dropped the ball. We started, we started about uh, 40 years ago, we started preaching this prosperity gospel. I ain't talking about the name and claim, just that. But we started preaching a gospel that was all about you get yours, you going to be blessed, you're going to have a business, you're going to get a book, you're going to this. And we stopped teaching that we have a communal responsibility, especially in the black community. To care for each other, look out for each other. And so we stopped being a voice as a moral compass for the community. The reason some of the crime is going on for us, I'm a huge advocate for those who are a lot of them out there in the streets, is because they don't see opportunity. Right. Yeah. They don't know how to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. If I pull up in a business and they like my car, they don't know how to get from where they are to the point of driving my car other than to steal it because I don't stop, like you said, and talk to them and teach them and say, hey, this is what I do, this is how I make it, this is what I've been doing. So they can do that. So I think because the church has failed in many ways like that, it's groups like this. Yeah. If the church won't start it, you know, we try to start it because I'm there. If I, they get another pastor, they, that pastor probably won't be studying either because they don't want to do this kind of work. So they don't come from this community. Right. Well, they just don't want to. It's hard right. to get out here and have to get on the front line and talk about stuff that everybody doesn't want to ignore. It's easy just to name and claim. You talk about some of the uh, disparities of men and women in the church. A lot of men stopped going to church and started letting the women be the, the primary people in the church because they didn't like the fact that their wives were listening to that man up there more than they yeah, listening yeah, to Yeah, 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 yeah. They respected the man in the pulpit more than they respected the man who's at home, and so they stopped going to church. You know, I, I like, I, and I, I ain't just too, but my pastor is still the man in the church, right? And you still got some that's out here. Yeah. But most of the pastors that you go to and talk to and say, hey, pastor, I want to do such stuff for the community, do this little program, man, and get out of the community. He said, well, you know, we got to go and talk to the women folk and see what they got going on, and, and then I'll get back to you. Right. I hate that. Yeah. You have, yeah, to me, you have women, women, women are the backbone of the church. So well, women, guess what? You what? Keep this congregation well, that, that's cute. That's cute. I like that. But if anything happened in that church in a bad way, mm -hmm. who's going to be held to a high standard? That's right. That's Bible, right? Uh, you, 
the head of the household. Right, right. But then when it went, that, that's a friend of mine, that's Charles and Tucker, she's a barber too. So 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 they are they they they, they supposed to be my backbone. They're back on church, they're supposed to be my backbone as a pastor, right? But when you they're say supposed your help me. they're supposed to be your help me. But when you put all the responsibility, you let the women just do everything. And if you try to make any decisions, you gotta go to the, the, the ladies in the church that's you know, but like I said, I, I respect my pastor because he's still the man. And, and they, they respect his call. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. no, it's leadership. You have to earn that, though. Yeah, you can really do it. But we start talking about like a lot of these kids out here in the community, a lot of young people, they're not all kids. Some of them wrong, you know, committing crimes and stuff like that. It's because they don't see other opportunities. They don't feel like they're qualified or that they're welcome to do something different. They haven't had <coughs> community pillars teaching them, giving them space to talk. If you have a young man in our community right now who's 17 years old, Mama might not be home, dad might not be at home, grandparents might be raising, or you might have everybody in the household. Mm -hmm. But if he don't feel like he has somebody to talk to, other than the people who next to him in the classroom, on the street, on the basketball court, and they feed his hand full of food, and that's a lot of eventual That's just where he, that's where he's going. And see, this 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 what I see. They have mentor that one okay. the, the the agenda that women own now, they was on a whole different agenda when we was raised up. Right. Because everywhere you go down that street, your neighbor, she was Miss this, Miss that, Miss the other. And if you say anything wrong to every one of them women, they can call home before you get there. Right. Right. You're going to get whooping, then they're going to take you back down there. You're going to explain yourself in front of them and get another whip. Yeah. At, at, at that time, y'all was going yeah, to. I felt like the men made sure, too. Once, once they said something, Miss said, said, oh, they own you. Oh, yeah, they own you. But see, right. now, these, well, I'm not going to. Put it all on women, but women they do different things and they carry themselves in a different standard than women did back then. Right, right. You know they they trying to impress the younger crowd by their looks and their style and the things they do and want to have. And you got the men that try to try to out trying to beat out his grandson for his girlfriend. Exactly. <laughs> you know I mean it's crazy for real. <laughs> You can jump in any time. No, I'm just wondering why I'm here. So uh, we just, we just, we just, we just, we just, we just, we just get, get started. Just, just talk about. <laughs> 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 we got, we got batches with it. But I always thought I might. So y'all just talk about. Yeah, we just want to just talk about this. You know, the topic right now is about what can we do to stop all this crime. Yeah. yeah. So we, 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 we started out. We I, want, I want to say express my issue. My issue is why did y'all close this meeting for only males? They want to close on this barbershop talk. Ain't nobody yeah. ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody this when you came in. No, but it just saying male or males. I'll tell you why. So when we have the males, so therefore the women should be involved so that they can hear what your concerns are with, with our generation. Well, that's why you're here. This, and young women. this conversation. This program was actually birthed by some women. Mm -hmm. yeah, was concerned yeah. about young men in the community and said, we want to give our young men a place to talk openly mm -hmm. and to put some things on the table that they might not put on the table if women are around or we, we want them to be able to have talk. So it's not the, the thing and the barbershop characterizing of it is because of what the barbershop has been for men over the years in our community. But it's the same zone. Yeah, a safe zone to express and to talk. And so the women who actually pulled the meeting together, pulled the meeting together, said, we start, we can put something in our community, we want to do this program. They said, we need a place for men, our young men to talk. They wanted to target between, I think it was 16 and 25 or whatever, somewhere in that age range, uh, to give them a safe place to put it out there. And because of the things that we understand about the way that we function, the way that we think, the way that we process, we didn't want to do, like, I don't even, you know, I, I didn't want to put as much of my bio out there as he did. <laughs> uh, we didn't want to do a lecture where I said, and just go over points. Like, so my, my doctorate degree is in community development and relationships across racial and generational lines. And so talking about the generational respect and disrespect is my specialty. Talking about how we breed and create uh, opportunities for 
opportunity as to organize our community so that people feel like they have a place. That's what I'm passionate about. But so I, I talked about, I mentioned, like that I used to live in the island for a minute. When I lived down there, I lived on the, an island that had the highest income per capita in any island in the Caribbean. Um, yeah. Harbor Island. Yeah. It is one of the 728 islands of the Bahamas. This island is only three miles long, on a half a mile wide. The northern mile is the new money, southern mile is old money. It's, when we go down to the harbor, and sometimes there's yachts down there with, with helicopters parked over and six jet skis parked over and things like that, like hundred million dollar yachts. But, hold on. In my church, I had people who were multi-millionaires singing next to people who made $136 a week. You had people who were billionaires who come to the island, get off with their kids and stuff, and go play with the kids on the island, have fun with them, and then get back on their yachts and come back to the States, go back to Canada, go back to Europe, and want to sit in a boardroom and entertain what, what a person who was as dark as the kids they played with on the island. But my kids who left on the island, who mama don't make for $136 a week in a place where milk costs $9 a gallon, they can't figure out how do I get a boat like this? How do I get a jet ski like this? And so that's why I talk about, well, when I don't see how to connect the dots and how to get to where you are, I pull up, I take it out your back closet while you're at work. I, I go in your house, I'm taking things off the shelf, I'm going to your drawers, because I don't know how to make it a different way, because I don't see another opportunity. All I see is the limelight. I see what they show me on TV, I see what they show me in music videos, and I don't know how to get from where I am to there. And so I'm just desperate, I'm in a panic, and I'm trying to do it by any means necessary to get there. You pass me every day and you don't even talk to me. But you mad at me when I commit a crime and you want to dog me out and demonize me. I come to the church, this is supposed to be a place of hope and opportunity for me. And when I walk in there, all you want to do is talk to me about pulling up my pants and how I need to cut my hair and do this other crap. You don't even know my last name. You don't care anything about me. Why should I care what you're talking about? This ain't the time where the society says that you're a good person if you, if you go to church. We don't live in that age anymore. Forty years ago, if you didn't go to church on Sunday, you pulled your car in the garage, you hit around the back, and you didn't want to back know that you weren't a church going person that day. Okay, two o'clock. <laughs> if you were around in the community and everybody was in church, you turned your music down, but you didn't want people to see that you weren't in church. You were sneaking past the church. You go down the streets that weren't on the church's block. <laughs> But now we live in a different time where the church has lost credibility because they stopped trying to be relevant. They stopped trying to reach people. They stopped trying to do this work out in the community and help people get along. And we just want to point fingers at people and be like, oh, you ain't this. You're not that. You're not going to be this. So these are the problems. No, we are the problems because we're not taking responsibility. We're not building community. We're not helping people get along for where they need to go. I didn't go halfway around the world to come back and sit on a pedestal. I can't went halfway around the world so I can make the connection and say, hey, y'all help me raise the money so I can take some of these kids out of Birmingham to the Bahamas, to Israel, to Ireland, to Cuba, to Argentina. To open up their minds. Seven children won't make it out of Birmingham. If nobody takes them, they have been out of Birmingham. Today, for somebody to do that. You feel me? Yeah. They buy, I'm going to live and die in my hood. That's right. They haven't been anywhere to experience this. But it's, oh, sure. and them people, you know, I'm all, I get I get hot about this. So y'all see, I get a little bit of tears. I was the most upset. But I get hot about this because I've sat so many places that people talk about this generation lost. If they lost, you lost them. Mm -hmm. It was your job to keep up with them and direct them and, and groom them. <coughs> you don't need to point I, I, fingers I, and say to somebody else that the, the, the kids are, are bad or lost or out there. You put them out there because it was your responsibility to keep up with them. Yeah. I hate when I hear men say, man, you know, you can't talk to these children, especially one I know is gangsters. Right. <laughs> you sell your, you sell your 12, 13 year old <laughs> That's crazy to me. And you say, man, you can't talk to these boys. You, huh? You're not scared, you're lazy. You're lazy to me. That, that's good. That, I like that. You like, you're not scared, you're lazy. You don't want to do the work. What they said, and then what, what, what we'll go back to? You know, it started at home. <laughs> like I said, because you were him. Like I said, that be the scapegoat for saying it. I mean, if it's not at home, get what? If it take a minute, you want a minute. So say something. You ain't got to just go up. And sometimes it's how you say it. You know what I'm saying? If you go up to a young man, hey, what's going on, man? And you ain't got to do it in front of his friend. You ain't got to do it. Man, pull your pants. 
When you talking in your conversation, you saying the right thing. He's gonna easily pull on pants up anyway. Because he's like it how you talk like that. Old school is pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? You you come to your respect, you know what I'm saying? You get that back. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you feel like they feel like, man, he make me feel apart. Cause some so many of them ask me, man, I'm unk. they call me, unk, I wanna talk to you about something. Like, what's going on? Man, I wanna talk to you about some business. I wanna I want to learn how to own up a business, but see, you got to be carrying yourself in the right way, too. You see what I'm saying? You got to be, they got to see the God in you, basically. You know what I'm saying? If they don't see that, if they don't see the man in you, the God in you, you know what I'm saying? They they, they, they figure like you trying to be like them, so they don't really want to talk to you, you know? But if they, if they see some man in you, and they see how you move, and they like, they'll come to you and talk to you. But see, me, I don't just stand there and talk to them. I say, hey, man, what you doing money? Show them. Right? They say, oh, well, I ain't really got nothing going on. Well, me being such a man, I'm gonna take you to lunch, I'm gonna take you to dinner. So now, you ain't got they, they like, man, then when you take them around other business folks, you know what I'm saying, now they, they feel like, well, wow, this is something I ain't never yeah. been a part of. So now they, they really, really want to talk to you. Yeah. Then when you take them to that business, man, say, hey, man, this is the type of business he's trying to start. Now they feel like, whoa, man, you know what I'm saying? You're helping me connect the dots. You're helping me connect the dots. The first time I was around some business man, uh, William Bill mm -hmm. took well, Big Body was his was right hand, Robert Benson. Uh, he took me to meet William Bill. When I get there, it's seven million there at the table. Mm -hmm. I'm tripped. Look at the fish market, and the only the fish market was in there. So they were sitting there talking about some business. The fish market on the south side. No, the south the first one now, the first one. The one over there in November. No, the one on the one on the south side, but the first one he had, what what uh, Nukes wow. is. Right, 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 right. So I'm sitting there, I'm 16. I'm 16 years old. I'm sitting there, and the man said, William, we finna get ready to go. I flew my plane down here, and he wanna buy it, so he gonna fly back. Now I'm gonna slid out the chip. <laughs> I said, what? I don't know about on no plane, you know what I'm So that was, you know, so it just started from there. But that's the thing. We need people who will say, even if I'm not at the top, if I'm halfway up the hill, halfway up the mountain. Bring somebody along. Show them. Yeah. Hey, this is how you do it. One of the things that uh, had the greatest impact on my life, that was a senior gentleman I was working on. So just moved back from the islands. I was working and I went to him. He was top of our university. And I said, if I wanted to be in your position, what would I need to do? And he didn't talk long. He said, I'll let you see. I said, okay. We finished talking about what we had to do. I was in this office for a report thing and I left. A month and a half later, I get a letter from HR that my position has changed. He pulled me into a different position so that I would have to sit at the table with his executive staff and take notes for eight hours straight and listen to every conversation for five years on how they were doing business negotiations, how they were moving things, how they were doing political strategies and developing resources in the community. Then he started giving me responsibility and said, I need you to now go and work on this, this uh, domestic partnership. I need you to go work on this international partnership. I need you to build our MOU. I'm like, MOU, what? <laughs> I'm trying to Google. I'm like, oh, I keep talking. <laughs> but I know what he's talking about. <laughs> but when he pulled me in and said, walk with me, you will learn more than me telling you what you need to do. Come walk beside me. Let me show you what I get into. Let me let you sit at the table. Learn how to be in the room and just watch and see how people are talking, what they're not talking about, how they look at each other when they know what's going on. You know, but those are things that you, it takes somebody with a heart to reach back and say, let me bring you in so you get exposed to this. So Everything so that we're fighting when we talk about crime, crime is just a subset, a symptom of something much deeper that's going on. Mm -hmm. Even when you got folks out here talking about they disrespected me, this is retaliation from this. The only reason that that's big enough to go out and commit crime over it is because that's the biggest thing in your world because nobody's brought you in and showed you anything better than this. You're going to be in your day. Every day. Yeah. But that's, so we have to build relationships and build communities to be. My platform I'm standing on and teaching about around the corner here, most of us live in neighborhoods. Not in communities. Neighborhoods are defined by geography. Where the lines are, you say you live in this set, you live in this place, but community is defined by the relationships you have with the people who are there with you. 
If you don't get to know them, you don't build trust with them, you don't build interest in them, they don't show interest in you. You ain't got nothing. That's right. Or you have to put a dress on space. And that's not gonna change your life and your heart, your mind. That's not gonna open up opportunities to you. Unless you try to get along and they don't look at your lips or you know. But that's about it. So that's to answer your question. I think that's where we're going on. Uh, if we really want to talk about crime in the city and some of the stuff that's going on, there's a lot of work we gotta do. So it's not about, you know, just talking to folks, it's not just it ain't about, you know, you gotta talk to parents and stuff like that. Let me tell you something. Anybody ever seen you got kids? If I tell you, we gonna have a meeting at the church to help you learn how to be a parent. Are you coming? No, you're not. <laughs> a lot of people won't. Most of them won't. But you are you I can speak with them from where I am. She she had she had had several kids, right? Mm-hmm. And so when she like not on, just speak like when she says she comes, she comes because she's serious about stuff. But a lot of a lot of women are not serious. They sensitive. They sensitive, right? But well, ain't talking about women. I'm talking about period. I'm talking about people, period. But I'm just saying. If I, you know, we say it's all at home, so we got some parenting classes. Yeah. Those are folks you say the, the, the problem there. They're not coming to let you teach them how to raise their child or what they do. They are offended by. Thank you already know. See, the reason I don't mind is because I'm raising a son. I'm raising boys, so I would love for them to be around me and so that they can. You got to get level of confidence too. It's all over you. We can't even. We just got to get out of here. You are different. You are a whole different guy. She's a baller. <laughs> but real talk, I appreciate that. And that's a real, um, to hear you just even acknowledge that, that I recognize as a perspective that I might not be the expert on about raising sons that I would like to know more about or have my son be exposed to. I get that I know women who they got it, they run it, they everything in the household. Mm-hmm. But I'm not the age to say, I need to know so too. Yeah. yeah, I'm not that man. You know, I can take him and we shoot basketball and I can throw the football at him and all those things, but I'm not that man. Yeah. I'm not that father. I'm, I'm a mother and I'm a woman, 100%. So. Yes. Yeah. I'm what you got? I'm just enjoying the, the dialogue. I ain't really got too much. Like you said, just about just beginning and going ahead. Taking in the conversation. Come on. Yeah, Come on. Come on. So you're not a father? Are you an uncle or a brother? Uh, a brother, good brother. Oh, okay. What would be your advice to women that's raising boys? I got y'all on Facebook, so it's like, okay. uh, I got y'all on Facebook too. I'm live too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because there's women that's looking and they, they like me, but a lot of women just don't speak up. Yep. Like like you said, uh, just put them around men. Like I feel like all men need to be. You can't you need men to teach a man. You know what I'm saying? A woman to teach a woman. Uh, well, the woman who uh, don't have uh, a male figure in the house, like they have a brother or a uncle. Just I don't know. Just try to bring them around men. That's all I can suggest. I don't have kids. I don't need. Everybody just trying to do what they can to get what they want. They present the facade, 
They have, they send in a representative to get what they want. Yeah. But the, the reason I push so hard on we got to get back to building community is because when I was a little kid and I rode my bike up the street, the crack addicts at the dope house up the street, they looked out for me just as much mm -hmm. as my great grandmother did who was sitting on the porch. Mm -hmm. And just because people have bad habits, Mm -hmm. Well, man, as it's about them, there are some positive things about them that we can learn from, too. And I can say that for me, because I was exposed to all those different sides and all those different kinds of people. It made me appreciate and respect and work with different people and not judge them for the lives they choose or the mistakes that they make. And I think if we're going to produce a better quality of generation coming behind us, we got to build communities so they do get to have a safe relationship with people who are sometimes questionable parents. Because you still get your life from it. You know, I, I'm, I'm big on this right here, because I love to do a lot of community stuff. Mm -hmm. If we if we're gonna do these type of conversations, not just here in any barbershop or any business, mm -hmm. I don't want to just have a conversation. Let's get out here as men and start first, as women and start first, and get back our community, get our community back, right? Because we can do a whole lot of talking in the boss shop and the church, well, yeah. right? But until we actually get out here and take action, like one thing from the church standpoint, right? Action to me is get to know everybody that's on your block, get to know everybody. Mm -hmm. Because this lady right here, they don't tell the church, can die. And you don't even know until the family gal up, right? Mm -hmm. Another church. And then this this person next door on this side, house is falling in, a grass needs to cut, and you got lawn care service in every church. And in, in every in, in all these thousands of right. thousands of people, right? So why not get the men in the church and say, hey, we're gonna go we're gonna cut grass in this community. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go and we're gonna we're gonna hire somebody from this community that's in this area, yeah. right here. And, and let them paint the church. Let them do it. You know what I'm saying? That's get that's get your community back. Instead of having a, a hot dog sale <laughs> and nobody show up, but the church knows. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't even know about they think a lot of people think I want to go down and get one of them hot dogs. They don't never even speak when I go back. Right. So that that's the biggest problem. And then we then we'll make that statement. Well, you know, Sunday is the most sacred day day to day. Well, guess what? You don't even know your name. <laughs> you don't even know your neighbor, but you tell me, love thy neighbor. Well, this is not right. That's the thing that's going to serve you. got to be a real relationship. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I always feel like I, I can't help this one. You got to be able to go out and do things for nothing. Yeah. You know, you can't expect yeah. monetary like, like you know, or whatever you know. little thing that you do. Uh -huh. well, you can't expect Fox 6 to be there to exactly. to, yeah, to right. film you while you're giving to exactly. the like, that's all I do. My I, about I do a last food thing, uh, and, and, and I've been doing it for a while. I have yeah. done it the last two years, but I don't never want the news out there. I never, I never invite the news. The rest I, matter of fact, I never invite people from other communities. Neither. I walk around the community myself and put the flyers out yeah. to, to, to each house, to each church. Now, the churches, well, they show up or not, but I put them out myself because I don't want nobody to go to community. And I do it in Collegeville because nobody doing another kind of business. Right. And it's in Hobart. There was 32 churches. Ooh. Oh, you thought we were going to take on that? This ball is up top. There was 32 uh -huh. churches. Uh-huh. Now it's 29. Know how I know? Because I walked around the county churches myself when I was putting the flyers out. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it's, it's 29 churches in Collegeville. It used to be 32. Yeah. Collegeville should not look like it looked with 29 churches. Mm -hmm. All right? There should not be a bridge in the middle of Pottersville separating the house from the community. Hold on, let me stop. Mm -hmm. Separating the house from the community. Come on. Well, there had to be a bridge. That was a dumb idea. That was a dumb idea. Well, I love it. Come on. They had to build a bridge because of what? Because the train had to be. And guess what? And guess what? You still get trapped over there. <laughs> no, I know. The one day I tried to get it kind of big. Man, I, I'm serious. I know everyone here. Well, I said, man, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Still got trapped. Couldn't get in kind of big. I'm like, it's crazy. 
So, hey, by the way, we ain't want to get it. So, that's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so like I said, it's two, it, was, it was only three schools in college. It was Hudson, Callaway, and Carl. Yeah. And I'm saying Collegeville because it's like it's in every community, mm -hmm. which all these churches in the community. You got Hudson, Callaway, and Carl, right? Three schools with twenty with 32 churches at the time. That's only one. Hudson shouldn't have a one for nothing at all, period. Zero. Yeah. Zero. And Hudson should have one for nothing. But Kennedy should have should have one for nothing. Woodlawn, Parker, and so on and so on and so on. You see what I'm saying? These schools should have a one for nothing with all these churches, with all these families, with all these men. Yeah, you know what I'm I mean, it should, it's, that, that, what you said at first, what I've been feeling, and the first person I ever heard say that was Thomas B. That the church has failed the community. And I had been thinking this when he said I was like, oh, he real. Oh, he real. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, oh, he real. <laughs> and he said it was a big, big meeting yeah. with all kind of dignitaries in there. He, 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 and he, it was his turn to speak. He said, the church has failed the community. I looked, I said, oh, he real. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, that, that. Yeah. So. Yeah, there should be labels for that period. That's true. Yeah. But we get mad when the church behind and come down to the community. Right. We're doing stuff in the community. Right. Oh, okay. Come in. Hey. I heard them say all over. I heard them tell them, say, hey, don't come over here and mess with our church. But you don't want, you ain't doing nothing. Nothing for Yeah. No. Pastor, you put me in a meeting with all of them. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> you wouldn't even have to show up if I was there. You would hear about it yourself. But that's <laughs> But that's the reality. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times we sit back, we become complacent, we don't contribute, we don't serve, we're not externally focused. But when somebody else tries to do something that's worthwhile for the community, we fight it. Yeah. Because we're afraid that they're going to get ahead of us or they're going to get something that we don't yeah. have. That was part of the breakdown of our community. We stop caring for and feeding each other and serving each other to make the community a better place for all of us. Yeah, and uh, until we start building on make sure to do it again, our community is going to continue to break down, uh -huh. fall apart. Uh -huh. We're going to continue to see crime rise up. Like I tell the church, from the pulpit, stop expecting the mayor, the sheriff, the mm -hmm. chief mm -hmm. to change mm -hmm. That's not that's not their job. Mm -hmm. That's it's our job. Mm -hmm. What about the New York Council? Uh, they had uh, that, that move waiting on Superman. <laughs> you waiting on somebody else to say you. Right. Right. Go grab one. Go grab them. Take them up there to the Show them how. It don't, it don't take them two point five to get it off. Uh, two point five to get it off. Mm -hmm. Look at it. See how it is. You make me feel like I don't work as hard. <laughs> That is the fair number. A uh, 2.5 to get it off. I just made the game But but guess what? All of us in here know somebody uh, that we can help get these young men well, to another level. All yeah. of us in here. Yeah. 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 All of us in here know somebody that we can help these young ladies mm -hmm. get into get into school. Get into yeah. school. Yeah. Get into yeah. But we gotta have to commitment to work. We gotta have to commit to do something. So even when we're talking, um, and I'm preparing for the night, you know, it's February, it's been about a, uh, almost a year since we had our last barbershop conversation. The last time we were together, uh, there was a pillar in our community, uh, Mr. Alfonso McClain, who was here, he kind of spoke up, and um, he had brought a lot of guys, a few guys that he knew out to the meeting, and he talked about some of the historic things that he had been a part of, and about, um, about three weeks after that, he passed. Um, it was a huge loss, and he was one who really stood on his morals and really being on trying to help other people and, and create opportunities for other people in the community. But I was looking at tonight, you know, talking about black history and how we stand where we are because of some of the legacies that people have left and established before us. And I wanted to ask, you know, even those of us who are in the room, what is the legacy you want to leave behind? What are you working to be remembered for when you're gone from this place? What do you want? What do you want to build so somebody else can stand on it and have a better life after you get to this place? Because um, sometimes I think we don't think through that enough. Because, like I
like I said, if I hear you say that you want to be the person who bridges gaps, who advocates for people, who has a chance to put other people on, set up entrepreneurial endeavors so that other people can learn how to be entrepreneurs, if I have the space or the incubation, if I have the resources or the connections to help you get on, I want to help you establish and leave your legacy. But what do you want to be remembered for when you're gone? And it can't just be, you know, respect. I don't want nobody disrespecting me. I, yeah, it's, it's more than that. When they're standing over you and, they, 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 and you stretch out, cemetery, church, wherever, what do you want them to be able to say about what you did, how you did? What do you want to be remembered for? Man, you know, I, and this is funny, but I just thought about this yesterday, but last year I went to two funerals and a retail. Mm -hmm. Right. And a pastor once said at my uncle's funeral, he looked around, there were so many people, black and white. He said, wow. And if you're honest with yourself, he said, be honest with yourself. Everybody really wanna know, I'm gonna who's gonna show up when I die. <laughs> just think about it. I mean, just be real. When you go to film, you look at all people like, who gonna show up when I die? If you really real with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So what we what we don't understand is a lot of people don't understand this. We here to tell people about the goodness of Jesus Christ That's right. and what he did for us. Mm -hmm. It ain't all about us. But you do want to leave a legacy. You want to leave a good legacy. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think about sometimes, <laughs> you think you ought to think about the stuff you have in your phone, mm -hmm. how you live your life, mm -hmm. uh, what you have done, what you have said, who you have led to Christ, mm -hmm. who, who, who have you led to live a better life, right? Our parents taught us to grow up, mm -hmm. go to school, to get a good job. They don't tell us grow up, go to school, so you can make a better life of yourself, so you can own your own business. That's right. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? COVID taught us, a lot of us, that hey, you can start your own business. That's what so many food trucks out here. COVID taught people that? COVID taught people a lot of stuff, right? Because they showed you that it was already in you. It was already, you were just scared. COVID kind of brought it out. It really brought it out, for real. You were just scared to make that move. And so I was telling the girl yesterday, I mean on Saturday, she was like, well, I, I, don't, I, mean, I want to move and do my own business, but I just, I said, check this out. I said, yeah. pray about this and let God lead you. Then it, thought, it, it popped in my mind, I said, oh, you know what? I said, I had five businesses, five. I said, every business, I said, I'm not lying to you. Every business I've had, I ain't had no money. I still got on faith. <laughs> now she won't know about faith, right? So then I said, I done had extra school events, a fed home, and all that stuff. And sometimes, like a bit sometimes, I ain't had no money. But I promise you, God made it happen. And we one time we paid 300 people in my box. You had a service In my box, 300 people in my box shop. And I promise you, that time I ain't had no money. <laughs> but I promise we fed over. I had so much food. That I had to beg some of those folks, and it wasn't just home. Take it. Sometimes it's it, it like like when we did with Christmas, those people that came, they were just in town, mm -hmm. and they was like, "Man, I see y'all cooking up. Come on, get your plate. Come on." And then I had a team of volunteers, and I said, "Hey, we need a plate. We need two plates. You know what I'm saying?" And man, that that particular time, I know for sure, I had no money. But you know, man, we had so much food. I had to beg, "Hey, man, take this plate with you. Hey, man, take some of this food with you." It was crazy. Back school thing, same thing. We bought you 10 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night. And we had so much food, man, that we had to beg for it. So it's like, it ain't about the money all the time. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about the money all the time. Right. When, when you're doing the right thing, and you, and you and he see it, God's going to make it happen. That's right. That's right. That's right. I always say, and then God has people that's in place to bless you. You have yep. to ask for that. Right. Right. that through, because yeah. He's seen yep. your works. He still see your works. Yep. Everything mm -hmm. that you're contributing to society, to His people, He's going to bless you anyway. So you don't need box six. You don't need mm -hmm. no. You don't need all these uh, higher eyes, as they call them. Well, I, I, I have to do what I'm talking about. I'm going to be the new. And do it one time. I'm going to get the new. I said, I don't, I don't do that. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't do that. But I don't. You know, not saying I'm against you, know, not that, but I'm saying I'm sure I, 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 I rather do it the right way. Just come from the heart and just mm -hmm. let man. I have, I have people that call me and ask for volunteers. Mm -hmm. 
I just love, I just love Duke stuff. I ain't trying to get no recognition. I ain't running yeah. no office none of that. Just love Duke stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I have had some great balls come out of here, donate, and, uh, like one of them. He got, he got a cotton candy machine, moonwalks, and a popcorn machine. He said, "Man, I'm gonna bring all my stuff." I'm like, for real? So now in my mind, I'm like, "What you gonna charge me for all this?" <laughs> <laughs> he said, "No." He said, "No, I'm donating." Yeah. No. And had his workers stay there. We still alive. We always alive. Live there, but we live. We always that one live, but that one live. Well, we have yeah, but that one still live. I'm gonna throw a plug out here. If we have any senior citizens uh, who want to come to North Birmingham tomorrow between 10 30 and 1, we are feeding and having a senior citizen fellowship. We do it every second and fourth Tuesday for our senior citizens in the community. It's called Prime Time. And I'm cooking for tomorrow, so it's gonna be plenty of food for everybody. Come through, uh, enjoy, share your story, your testimony about how you're a part of history because you're a part of our time and transforming lives. And we would love to see you in the place. Well, I'm a member of the Foot Soldiers. Shout out to Miss Paulette, Foot Soldiers Organization, uh, uh, Civil Rights Activist Committee, Fourth Avenue Downtown. So I, I'll put that in the group chat, what you're doing. And we'll talk again, and we'll talk again, we'll talk again afterwards. For sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, come on. Legend, I put it out there. What do you want to be remembered for? Um, that's a good question. I, I don't want to be remembered yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just not being scared, not being afraid, not having fear, yeah. and then just doing it. Like, choice is known for doing it, taking chances, not caring about what anyone says, mm. you know, be confident. She was a confident woman. You know, I have people ask me that all the time. Like, where do you get your confidence? You know, and I say it's within you. You have to know if whatever you're going to be a part of, you got to know what you're bringing to that whatever it is that you're going to. So well, if you're going to a job and you're going to work somewhere, you know that you're going to go in there and you're going to perform. You're going to be the best. You're going to be high up there when it comes to productivity. Mm -hmm. So you just got to have that within yourself. It's something that, you know, you can do it. Where do you think that came from? Um, I mean, the company, I don't know, I think it's, it, it's been in the since I've been mm -hmm. I've always loved people, I've always loved to train people, help people, talk to people, give, you know, generous. I was raised up in that type of environment. Yeah. I think leading by example. Right, that's that's kind of what I do. I take that I mean, so I try to lead by example. Uh, we just had an ABMOC meeting there last week, right? And then we had a big guy from the business alliance, Mr. Victor, who's the vice president of like the business alliance, Herman Business Alliance. I had one of my seniors speak with him, and while we were driving over here, he was telling me what he wanted to do, sports management, you know, different business he wanted to get into. Because I told him what I did, and he didn't understand like the severity of what I do. But I was explaining to him what I was doing. So after the meeting, they, the, Mr. Victor actually asked for contact information for the, for the champion. And um, you know, they went past, I called for now, like, did you email him or did you text him? But no, I didn't text him. I told him, I said, hey, text him a screenshot to me. Like, to me a screenshot and you text him. So after that, he kind of started seeing that, okay, I had to take actionable steps to get where I'm going because each and every day, I'm an avid reader, right? So I read all the time. So when I'm around when I'm around them, I'm always reading. And we go out in public, I try to move how I want somebody else that would teach me how to move. Right. Like, so mm -hmm. how they talk to different folks. I remember when I first met Corey, he used to be on the hospital. When I first met him, when I shook his hand, it was weak, you know, not looking me in the eye, uh, kind of brushing me off at first. But in the span of like four or five months with me being around him, he's changed dramatically. He wanted to go to college at the University of Alabama. Um, like I said, he's trying to get into the Birmingham Business Alliance uh, internship this summer. So it's just like I said, lead by example, showing him that you're able to do what I'm doing. Right? Showing him my properties like, hey, I got this, you can do the same thing. Like, I got this car, you can drive back, and I'm driving. I didn't do anything different than what you already doing. It just took somebody believing in me. So that's why I'm doing the same before for him. Right? And just that's why I say lead by example. That's why people don't even understand the type of feeling you get. The euphoric feeling of helping somebody. 
A lot of people have never reached that feeling of like helping somebody and not just wanting more than anything from them. And some people will be scared about that. Some people are like, hey, what do you want from me? And they're like, I don't want anything from you. Anything, anything that's keeping out want from me hard to God. I don't need them. Right? So it's just about bridging that gap to some folks that, hey, I want to help you. I want to see you be successful without no notoriety of, well, Mr. Q help me. No, I don't want you to say that. Right. It's all on you. You took the step. I just showed you the way, like you said earlier. I showed you the path. It's on you to step through it. So that's what I think with, you know, legacy is about showing example. You know, we try to make it, not saying anybody in this room trying to make it selfish, but a lot of people try to make it selfish about them. But I think to be uh, a worthy person, it's about who you help and not what you've done. Right? So he said about the funeral. People get to talk about, you know, who's done what, who's done what. Uh, I've gone to a lot of funerals where I served, it, it, it wasn't that many people that talked, you know what I'm saying? But I went to a funeral two weeks ago where we sat there for two hours from people just saying what that person done for them. And it kind of inspired me a lot, like I need to help some more people. You know, so we need to buy them for that shit. What do you want to be remembered for at the moment? Well, just basically coming through at first. For a while, I was on the wrong side of the track, you know, yeah, what do you like, dirt? <laughs> you know, since then, life has changed, you know, but working, helping people, you know, starting a business, being married, you know, raising, raising a good family, you know, I'm proud of that. And, uh, right, man. Like I see people daily that you know need something to eat. Somebody walking and they look tired, they gonna ride for them. Just helping people in general. It's a helping people. Letting everybody know that they can overcome the hurt. Just don't let nothing get in the way. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't give up. Just keep trying. Keep striving. What do you think uh, people have lost? They don't have a voice. They're, they're scared to speak. They're scared to express themselves. They're scared to. They may have a whole lot to bring to the table. Most people, most babies, when they come out of the womb and they take that first breath, they start screaming. They make noise to let you know they're alive. Over time, we are taught to be silent. We are taught that our voice and the noise that we make is not to be appreciated or even worthwhile. And that's why some of us have to go and find people sitting in corners, sitting in the shadow. I'm not just talking about the corner of the room. They sit in the corner of the family, the corner of society. They sit back there, hide, because nobody lets them feel like what they have in them, who they are, what they bring to the table is worthwhile. And we got to help people find their voices again. You can't give them a voice, but you got to help them own the voice that they have. And that's it. So go back to what you said. When a child is born, he's free, right? And they're taught to dumb down and be quiet, right? We have children now, right? That when they're babies, they look like they're already smart. They can't even code this smart all the time. Okay. All right. So when they have a little voice, we tell, ah, oh, be quiet, right? But that comes from Generations of right. when grandma was speaking, you shut your mouth. Right? Right. 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 But it trickled over to when a child is autistic. Uh -huh. They take the whole they, they, well he autistic, he don't know how to do you know how many CEOs with autistic? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many CEOs that have down syndrome down syndrome? You get what I'm saying? So now when you look when I look at that and I tell Pastor, no, let him work. 
Get him a little job. See, still they always want to just keep him. He, he autistic. He can't do that. Right. Well, no, it, it's, 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 you can't do that. You gotta, you gotta let them work. That's right. You gotta, you gotta show them the handle for them. Expose them. Because yeah. really, to be honest with you, yeah, expose them. Because to be honest with you, a lot of these children are way smarter than what you think. Yeah. Well, he don't know how to do that. Then he come home and put your computer together. <laughs> <laughs> you got a baby that to have an iPad and can go through this thing. And download that, but you say he don't know how to. Right. So just imagine he take that same and put yeah. it into his school. Yeah, because a lot of them can't write. They get on these digital devices. Yeah. They can't write from what I'm experiencing. Exactly. Yeah. I'm Man, experiencing. I was I was in a Bible, I was teaching a Bible study class at Delta. And I taught about four years. I was sitting down and I was writing a letter. I forgot what it was for. But I had like 24 children in my class at this time. Man, they got me. I said, ooh. I said, Y'all don't know how to write it. It took curse right now school. But check this out. How do you, how do you sign your check? That's right. You, you can't just break You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. They just took curse right now school. Yeah. I tell you how a curse that is. I right be on um, Sunday. I had a young man in my church. He's six. He's always been inquisitive, and his parents supported him in that. We did a survey. I said, if they don't vote on this survey, I want the kids to do it too. So we gave him the survey. And he was taking the words and he was writing them over in cursive. And I said, oh, stop. Mm -hmm. He started writing cursive. Six years old. His mama said he wanted to learn, so he started. But with going, going to that, everybody has a way that they learn best. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. We talk about this whole thing of building community, making space for everybody. Everybody has a way that they learn best. You know, some people visual learn, some right. auditory yep. learn. Tactile, so they got to do it with their hands. Mm -hmm. You remember, on you the have all that show. space for everybody. Mm -hmm. You remember on the college show when, when Theo found out he had dyslexia? <laughs> Check it out. So I didn't know what it was. I, I, I saw the college show many times on that part of that. And so I've never been diagnosed, but I know I see things about it. Mm -hmm. I see something before it happens, though. It's a form of delay. I flunked twice, mm -hmm. right? I flunked the fourth and the fifth grade, mm -hmm. right? But I was just up being the smartest of the children, right? So it was like, I just really shut down, for real. So I'm sitting in class and draw all this, right? But the crazy part about it, I learned later on that, like, all the stuff I was supposed to learn in school. You know what I'm saying? So some children learn different. Some people learn different. Some, 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 right. some people learn different. Early growth on some, yeah. some later yeah. right. But when we start labeling people and saying that, you know, he's this, some people have legitimate, diagnosable, chemical imbalance, things like that, we have to name it and get different problems that they need. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people have the opportunity to learn, but they learn differently than we are accustomed to do. Right. You, you, you might want to, you might have a classroom of 25 kids, you just want to talk the lesson. Some of them need to write the lesson down in order for them to get it. That doesn't mean that child is slow. Right. Yeah. yeah. That they need to develop yeah. You have to do it in a way that they that they understand. It's just like you're building community. Some people in community process relationships different. They learn relationships. They learn value different. But you have to be able to appreciate the different ways Absolutely. that they come to the table. Right. Well again, it takes the approach that you mentioned earlier in communities like yeah, yeah, me. So in, in, in that action of meeting people, you're learning them as well. So you, you said you got a doctor. Mm -hmm. You got a doctor. Right? So your way of speaking to the youth, right, might be different than his way. Right. You know how to get on, because you learn. Mm -hmm. He know how to get on, because this was in him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you can't say, oh, young man, you don't know. Let me, I got a doctor. You can't do that. And you, I mean, you don't do that. I'm just saying, like, that's what a lot of people do. They look at him in a way you're like, oh man, he he young. What what, what he know? Yeah. <laughs> right? And yeah. then when they get to hear him talking, they have to sit down. Man, man, man. Man, that well, talk. Not when they get to hear him talk. <laughs> no. When they realize that he's more effective than I am, because I learned the theory of like that. that the heart. I like right. that. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I have the training, but he has the anointing. We're going to put the church training. Hey. <laughs> hey. 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 Then all of a sudden we're confused yeah. because we even we live in a society that has built itself on credentials. But you are in the black community. That wasn't always the case. Mm -hmm. right. When we started only honoring credentialing, mm -hmm. 
We stopped appreciating people for the difference and the value that they brought to the table. We 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 right. start waiting on uh, when we start waiting on just the offer, rather than uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> rather than showing that this man back here, right, mm -hmm. has done everything he's supposed to do in the community. Mm -hmm. That's the real leader. That's right. But you waiting on them to right. tell you, good job. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, now you say it. Uh -huh. No. Stop asking for a seat at the table, bring your own table. <laughs> and then don't ask for a seat at the table. That, that goes back to what I was saying. Yeah, you got to know what you want in. You got to be ready to, you know, to, to do that. And as a community, we have to be able to stand up and own those Absolutely. valuable pieces, uh -huh. strategies that we have embraced for years. Uh -huh. And collectively come together and yes. everybody, you know, plays a part. Because the candy laid on the corner has kept a lot of people out of bed. Absolutely. That's not the lot of talk. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That's right. 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 Known of you, but you used to come to school. Didn't you go to Hayes Middle School? I went to Hayes, but what middle school did you go to? Hayes. You, you didn't go to Hayes? Mm -hmm. You don't wear bow ties and all this? I wore bow ties. She knows what she thought was like. I ain't going to Hayes, but I, I, I wore bow ties. I, 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 I still wear bow ties. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of people, they can't wear bow ties. They don't want to tie bow ties. I don't know. 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 Uh-uh, no, I ain't gonna hang out. You probably wasn't yeah. hanging out. No, I wasn't hanging out. I wasn't allowed to have a meeting. <laughs> Already? Already? Oh, you want some splinter? I ain't want some splinter. I wasn't going to try, though. All the time? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe when the song school goes, though. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm going to have song school with every song. Oh, my God. I'm going to tell you what. Like I said, I wasn't smart. But then my other reason was to win the half and that was my way to get my summer lunch. Oh, okay. And that was my way of getting out of the house because I was little. My grandma was really pretty much raised, but my mom, she was always working, so my grandma had to keep me right, so that was my way of getting out of the house. It might have been a little bit, because I went to Willow High School too. Oh, you went to Willow? Yeah. 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 We got the best week. Break, Look, we got the, we had the best week every 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 year. Mm -hmm. When we have our, 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 our high school, you know the school week. Oh, uh, 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 Woodlawn uh, got it. Uh, Along that week, we shut it down every year. We said Woodlawn shut it down every year.
So he said, the next time I, yeah, he was gonna call the next time I, I saw him, when DT, when D, Gary Thomas, the football player had the club, you know, and I walked, he said, can you cut that? I said, I'm bad now. You ain't another chance. You know what I'm saying? And my cousin came with a statue of love in my head. He told me, Art, he said, man, next time I see you, sorry. <laughs> he said, man. That's why Art lies. He said, man, I got to be on the TV. You know, know what I'm saying about that? They ain't going to see the back of your head. Because I ain't going to see the back of your head. With the floor around the back. Boy, right? This, I ain't know how to bleed. You know how the guy with a little, little single out? Yeah. I ain't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't know why you ain't do that in the first place. <laughs> This is good. I really thank y'all. Thank you all. Uh, I think we have the date coming up for the next barbershop conversation. I want y'all to look out, look for flyers, stay connected, and be willing to come back out and share again when we get together again because we need all these voices and we need our connections. Like I said, try to be as open as that is for all the conversations like this. And wherever you can have them, wherever you can bring people to them, have them. Do it. Because this is what's going to make our world better. And if you're part of an agency, organization, Religious or social, and they're not holding up their hands, fight to make them better. You know, call on the carpet and push to make them better. Um, we have that responsibility. Okay, this too far away. Um, once I figure out the dates, I'm in Hudson, England, so I'll make sure we give it to the kids so they'll know that we can come in and do it. What are you doing in the school? No. At the school? No. Yeah. 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 That means you have a good connection. You've actually made an impact in their lives. Because that was one of our um, even conversations and planning. When you start um, trying to do this work of how do you even get people out or how do you have an impact on <laughs> the young men in the community, the question hit the table, well, what do you do these days? Right. You know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, you had a few names you could call. Sometimes it was a minister or whatever. Sometimes it was just a political leader in the community. You say, if so and so says, y'all meet me down here on Tuesday night, on Monday night, people will show up. Right. But today, when we started talking about these, not today, but like this past few years, we started talking about, okay, who are all these guys we're trying to reach listening to? Who has their attention and has their respect enough for them to show up when you say, hey, you need to hear more conversation? Right. We couldn't find nothing. And so we started trying to mind, like, okay, who is it? They said, well, maybe some of the local rappers. They have a, a decent following in some of the places. <laughs> With <the> street <laughs> but it's, it's, been, it's, it's hard. Those guys, you know, couldn't find guys here. And these guys, so they said that they were forced to be a man in their households. Some of them very young. And they had to get out there early and be sisters and brothers. You know, mama said, what mama doing? Daddy, you know, he got a ring. You know, so some of them were in their households. So, if you, if you know, if you recognize and appreciate it, I offer that to you, like, you know, and commend you on it. If they are listening to you, and they're willing to show up when you say that stuff. I applaud you for the work you're doing to build those relationships and to connect. And I want you to acknowledge that God, something greater is doing a work through you to touch and connect with God.
we got fifteen hundred all over Jefferson County. So. Fifteen hundred. Yeah, go to the right ones there. Right? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred bottles up. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The wall way every corner. Okay. Well, we got we got seventeen hundred bottles up now. Okay, we're gonna do a raffle real quick. Let me find my ticket. Come on. Can I find your ticket? Oh, oh, thank y'all, thank you all so much for coming. We really appreciate that. Right. We really do. And because y'all came, everybody's gonna get a five dollar right. um the Chick Fil A gift certificate. Oh, Curtis, you're going to miss the gas now. You're going to make sure everybody can get a coffee and a biscuit or something for their $5 gift stick. For what? So, from Chick fil A. Thank you so much for having me. Everybody's going to get one. I'm going to wait till she does the raffle first. Okay, first round is going to be 5, 4, 2, 7, 4, 2. The last, we just read the last one. The last three digits, seven, yeah. four, two. Right here. Okay. Okay. It's right. <laughs> oh, 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 they did. Oh, no, they did. Oh, they did. Oh, okay. You got your gift certificate. It's okay. Here you go. I got you. Here you go. There's your gift certificate. Oh, Thank you for so much. Thank you.
You and Cree got a son together? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I ain't know that was a son. I've been knowing since you were a baby. But I ain't know that was a son, though. Okay. Okay, okay. He told me, he said, you're rapping. He pulled down my car again. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I can have everybody except pride. Yeah. So just let me know, you know, when you have the time, we'll put it together. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. He won't be on the other side. That's why he's sitting there. Huh? Uh huh? Uh huh? Oh, pride, man. You remember anything that I was talking about? Tuning in, we appreciate you for all you do. Like and share. Thank you.